Hi, my name is Larry Farsakian. I'm a practicing endodontist from Highland Park, Illinois, which is a northern suburb of Chicago. I've been an endodontist for 26 years. I started out as a general dentist, practiced general dentistry for four years after graduating from Loyola University School of Dentistry in 1984. I ended up going back to Loyola to get an endodontic degree and finished in 1990. In the process of doing that, I was able to become a general dentist and relate to a lot of the things that you're going to be going through as a general dentist. But as an endodontist, I'm looking specifically at root canals. And one of the things about root canals is we always judge our cases on success. How do we do look at that from a successful standpoint? Well, there's basically two ways. One way is we look at a case two, three, four years from now to make sure that it's successful and is still okay. But the second way we look at it is from a very critical standpoint of length control. When we see our final x-ray, we look at that x-ray and we say, are we right on? And when you know you're right on, you know that you have that chance of being successful. So one of the great challenges of doing a root canal is looking at it from length control. So why don't we take a look at that today and let's see how we can control our length as we're doing a root canal procedure. So once we've started that root canal, there's a couple things that we need to consider before we determine what our length is. First thing is, what we want to do is you want to reduce the occlusion to that tooth if possible. Sometimes you can't do that because you have a crown on there. But if there's not a crown and you know that eventually you're going to put a crown, reduce that occlusion. Get a flat plane so you can get a reproducible reference point later on. The second thing you need to do is you need to gain straight line access. There's many ways to do that, but once the access is made, the thing that you need to do is there's a little triangle where the access chamber meets the canal orifice. You want to remove this triangle. Once you remove this triangle, you can have more of a straight line access to the apex. You have to remember, you, you, you don't want canals to curve many times, and if you can remove that triangle, you're going to have more of a straight line view down to that apex. In looking at this graphic, what we're showing you is the position of a file when it's initially placed into a canal. If you look at the graphic on the left, what you're seeing is the file placed into the canal while that triangular dentin is still in place. You can notice that the file curves a couple times in order to get to the apex. Well, when you're using rotary instruments, you want those files to curve as minimally as possible. So in order to do that, you take that triangular dentin away. When you look at the graphic on the right, what it's showing you is you can reposition the canal, the orifice of the canal, so that you get more of a straight line access. The other reason why that's important is this. When you're taking a measurement, the picture on the left shows you a reference point at one spot. If you take away that dentinal triangle and you look at the picture on the right, your reference point is going to change. This can mean as much as a millimeter to half a millimeter of distance when you're determining the length of your, your canal. So you always want to get rid of that triangle, have the straight line access so you can get the reproducible point for your length determination. It's important to remove that cervical bulge for a number of reasons. The first reason is it reduces any obstruction down to the apex. The other thing is, as we said and as I stress, it improves straight line access. You avoid any erroneous working measurements because you have that reproducible spot and it does allow for better visualization of the canals. In looking at the anatomical portion of a tooth, there's a few things that we have to consider. Number one is that we're trying to get to the end of that root and that's where the apical foramen is. When you're filing out a case, you want to get to the cementodentinal junction. The reason is, is because that's where the pulp ends. From a histological standpoint, you want to extend your preparation to the cementodentinal junction. Now, we all want to say it gets to the apical constriction, and that is correct. We hope that the apical constriction is the same place as the cementodentinal junction, but it's not always the same. That's the important reason why we need an apex locator also, because that apex locator will tell us where that change occurs 
from the inside of that canal, which is a cementodentinal junction, to the outside of that canal, which is then the apical foramen. You have that delta at the end of the, at the, end of the root that you want the preparation to go just before that so you can maintain you have the fill and the obturation material within the canal. If you look at the picture here, you have the original canal shape. When you're filing out a canal, one of the things that you want to do is you always want to maintain the same anatomical configuration of the original canal shape. One way to do that is to know, again, where that cementodentinal junction is. If you can file to that point, you can have a taper funnel from the top of your orifice all the way down to your apex. If you don't know where that apical constriction is, then all of a sudden what you're doing is you're filing blindly through the end of that root. And what you're doing is you're opening up the apex and creating a shape where it will not contain packing material when you fill the case. If you look at the picture in the middle, that's where you need, that's where you have the apex located to help you determine exactly where the canal is. The picture on the right, an apex locator you assume is not used because the apex is blown. Now there are four basic ways to determine the length of a tooth or a canal. One, of the f one way is through tactile sense. What is tactile sense? Basically what it is, it's taking a file, putting it into the canal, and feeling your way down. Now, although this can be done, this is very, very hard to do. And you have to have a lot of sense in, within your fingers to tell you when you're at that apex. One of the ways that most people tell is they put a file in, and when you can feel that file just kind of slip and, and just jolt right past that constriction, the people determine that that's where the apex is, or that's where the constriction is. Well, that's a really empirical place and it's not something that you can do time after time. You need something that's a whole lot more consistent. Another good way to test the length of a tooth is by what's called a paper point test. And essentially what a paper point test is, it's to file out a case. Once it's filed out, you take a paper point and you put it into the canal. Now, the taper on that point at the end will go through the, through the uh, minor diameter. When you pull the paper point out, at the end of that paper point, it's either going to have blood on it or it's going to be wet. And what you can do is you can actually take that paper point and press it like this with your finger and it'll bend. And where that spot is that it bends, you can measure with the ruler and say, hey, that's the length of the canal. Well, that's a great thing. And I'll be honest with you, I do that on all my cases. But you do that after you file the case. You can't do that at the start. So if you don't do that at the start, you don't know exactly how long your canal is supposed to be. So although the paper point is a great test, you can't do that until after the case is filed out. Another way to look at, at, at uh, length control is by a radiograph, which we're going to go over here in a few minutes. And the last way to look at it is the apex locator. So let's look at the radiograph and let's concentrate on this for just a moment. When you have it, a, a radiograph, you look at it and you say, okay, if I'm at a certain spot, what I need to do is I determine where the end is, or where the constriction is, and most people will say, I'll pull back to about a millimeter from that point. That was the great uh, study by Yuri Cutler that was done many years ago. It was through his study that we said we have to pull back that one millimeter. When you get to the point where you have to determine length through a radiograph, the best thing to do is you have to use a size 15 file. If you use a size 10 file, sometimes you can't tell exactly where that file is in the tooth. So you've got to get to at least a size 15 file. You put the 15 file in, then you take a radiograph. You need a non-distorted radiograph. You need a good picture so you can see exactly what's going on. Once you get that radiograph, then you have to determine where you're at within that canal. Are you at the apex? Are you long or are you short? And if you're short, two millimeters or more, you have to readjust the length of that file, put it back into the tooth, and take another radiograph. 
But sometimes when you look at that radiograph closely, what you'll find is when you think you're at the apex, when you blow up that picture, you'll find that you're actually out of the apex. You're past that constriction, that minor diameter, or that apical constriction of where you want to file to. When you look at a tooth, you find that the portal of exit is not always directly at the apex. It can be short of that. And if it's short of that, what you're going to find is that file is going to be sticking actually out of the canal instead of being contained within the canal. So that's another reason why it's important to have the apex locator. It helps you determine exactly where that point is. When you're taking a radiograph like this, you could never be exactly sure. Sure, you have a good estimate of where you're at, but you can never be exactly sure, and you have to use these empirical um, thoughts in, in, in order to get to the point that you need to be. When that file is sticking out of the canal, you have to look at this from an empirical standpoint because you have to determine in your mind exactly where that canal, where that file is exiting. Now, you can use adjuncts with that, and that's where the tactile sense and the paper point can come in handy, but you, if you know these things before with the small files, then you're not ripping the apex, in a sense, with the larger files as you're putting them through to determine the length. So you get this point, and you have to retake an x-ray sometimes. When we look at this video, as we're looking at this, we're putting a file into the canal, and what we're doing is we're watching the file as it goes through the apex. Now think about this. If you're taking that file and you're going through the apex, and let's just say that that's a 20 or a 25, even a 30 file where you think you're at the apex, what you're going to end up doing is you're going to end up sticking that file through the end, and you're going to end up tearing the, the, the constriction that you want to maintain in order to get the proper obturation. This is something that needs to be considered when you're looking at central incisors. Actually, with any root also, but when you're looking at these incisors, what you're going to find is where you think the end of the root is on that radiographic point is not the end of the canal at the cementodental junction or that minor diameter. When you look at a tooth like this, sometimes you'll have resorption of that apex and there's a, the resorption of the apex will actually take that minor diameter to further in the canal. If you have that situation, you're going to have a, a longer distance from that minor diameter to that major diameter. So these things have to be considered when you're looking at roots. It's important that you use the apex locator to help you determine these things because again, if you're not, you're going to be long. You're going to file long and you're going to rip the end of the, the root. When we look at this, I know I've been talking about apex locators a lot, and, and you have to think of this. You say, well, who needs an apex locator? It's very simple. Anybody who does a root canal needs an apex locator. You want to have a device or you want to have a system where you know that you can get consistent, reproducible points. And the way to do that is by using the apex locator. Radiograph is good and you should take a radiograph even though you are using an apex locator. The paper point is good, but you need that apex locator to determine where the end of the, the canal is. And the tactile feel, again, that's an empirical thing which uh, I'm not crazy about anyway. But who needs apex locators? You do. If you're doing a root canal, you need to use an apex locator. It'll help your accuracy, and when it helps your accuracy, the quality of your work is going to go up. It'll help your speed and convenience. And when you do that, the quantity can go up because as you're working in a tooth, you can move a little bit quicker. You can move a little bit smoother. You can move a little bit faster. Again, when you're, taking, when you're using an apex locator, in my opinion, you still need to take a radiograph. It's always great to confirm your work. It's always great to confirm and have check, dub, check and recheck where you're at within that canal. Another point that people make is that you confirm a type 2 canal. Now what's a type 2 canal? Basically a type 2 canal is where there's two orifices that converge into one apex. And when you have that situation, what basically what you're doing is you're putting files inside there and you're filing out one canal and you put the file in the other canal, you're filing that one out. 
Well, if you know that it's a type 2, you don't need to file out the second canal all the way because the first canal that you filed has already reached the apex. Well, one way to determine that is to put it a file inside the first canal and then put a file inside the second canal. And if that file hits short of the binding point of that apex, then you know that you've hit that other file. Well, you take that first file out and you can put the second file in and then push the first file back. If that first file doesn't go back to the same spot at the reference point, then you know that the two are joining. The other way to look at it when you're using the apex locator is as simple as this. If you get a length for the canal one and length for canal two, but yet when you put both of those files in, one file is stopping shorter than of that perceived length. Then you know that the two are joining into one apex. If you're using an apex locator, you need to know and you need to understand what your apex locator is measuring. Well, obviously, we want to know where the canal terminus is. Is that the major diameter, the minor diameter? That can be discussed as we go along, but the point is you want to find the canal terminus. That's our ultimate goal. But when you're using the apex locator, what you'll find is where there are lateral canals, there's vital tissue or necrotic tissue in those areas. There's an exchange of fluids in that, at that point in that canal. And so when you put the file in, you may hit a spot where you're going to read where a lateral canal is. Now, that can be easily overcome because as you're filing the case a little bit larger, you're going to get past that point and you'll be able to determine whether it is a lateral canal or whether it's a, the canal terminus. The other thing is, is a perforations. Now, you say, well, we don't want to determine perforations because you don't want to have perforations. But I can tell you, every one of us have had that situation where we make an access in a tooth and as we're starting to go down this little hole that's in the base of the floor that there's blood that starts to come up. Well, when that blood starts to come up, we get a little bit nervous. We say, oh, geez, is that a, is that a canal orifice or is that a perforation? Well, one of the easiest ways to determine that is to use the apex locator. Get a 10 file, a small file, put it into that orifice. And then as you put it into that area where it's bleeding, you know, all of us are going to, we're going to cringe like this and we're going to wait. And then you look at that apex locator and it just goes right down to the end of the root and you can relax and you can get down and know that that's in a canal terminus and not a perforation. And if it is a perforation, you just correct it at that point and you close that hole and you move on and look for the other canals. The other thing that an apex locator will read is it will read defects of where resorption is communicating externally. If there's a resorptive defect on a root, you may find that your apex locator isn't going to read a canal terminus. It's going to be reading where that defect is along the root. That's a tough one to overcome and that's probably uh, a subject you can broach in a different lecture. But for the most part, your apex locator is reading those four things. Your canal terminus, where lateral canals are, helping to determine if there's a perforation or not, and then where the resorption defects are that can communicate externally. The apex locator that I like to use is called a Promark. Now, there are many apex locators that I've used over the years. I've been doing this for 26 years, so I've used, I don't know, maybe four, five, six of different apex locators. I like to use the root ZX, but I've changed now to the Promark. Reason being is this, it's very simple. There's this, this study that was done in Spain. And what they found out was is that the Promark apex locator was a bit more accurate than the root ZX was. It's so accurate that within one millimeter of the apical constriction they had a hundred percent accuracy and within a half millimeter there's over 88 percent accuracy. That's pretty darn good and that's kind of nice to know that if you're using this apex locator what you're doing is you have that confidence that you're getting to the point that you need to get at in order to get that proper shape and proper compaction of the uh, filling material within that tooth. With this particular apex locator in mind, there's some things that we have to know and things that we have to consider when we're using this apex locator. So let's take a look at, take a moment and let's look at a few of those right now. To turn it on, there's a button on the side and you press it. Hold the button for a second and then it will turn on. Now I know that sounds a little bit goofy, but the point is if you just press it real quick, it won't turn on. 
And actually the same goes for turning it off. When you turn it off, hold the button for a second and then let loose. On the top left is a tooth and that shows you the progression of the file as it's going through the tooth. But also in the top right you have a red lead and a gray cord that's there where the lip clip and the file clip are. When you plug the leads into the machine what happens is, is that cord will turn gray and the lip clip and the file clip will turn orange. When it's gray and when it's orange that means the unit is ready to use. Next thing what we'll look at is there's a couple options that you have in order to adjust the machine. You go to this gearbox and you turn that and you get doctor's choice, check, and demo. In the doctor's choice we can adjust the settings to the apex locator that we want but at this time let's look at the demo so we're going to press that and when we press that that's going to show us the movement of the machine and the graphics as a file is going down the canal. Again upper left hand corner you can see a file going down the canal but when it gets to the apical portion then it goes to the larger graphic. The blue is the the graphic initially and then it turns green. As we said that you're supposed to file to approximately the third green bar and uh, then it changes to the yellow and to red. When it's red and you see the red dot at the end that means that you're out the tooth and out the canal and so you want to be back from that point. So anywhere in the green and the yellow is a good place to be. Again recommended place is where it says doctor's choice on the green bar. Now what you can do to that is in order to change that you can press the gear again you can go to doctor's choice and let's say that you don't want your apex to read right at this green point you want it to read a little bit lower well all you gotta do is get into this setting take your finger bring it down and it'll set it down to another spot and it will hold it there and if that's where you like to file to then that's where you're gonna file to and as I said before that's usually where I file to my cases too and then once I get that reading I back up just a little bit. Now that we've seen the graphics let's take a look at the audio portion. I want you to hear the audio so you know how to adjust it and where to adjust it. Basically the adjustment is done at the sign where you have the speaker there. So let's go into the demo mode and then what you do is in order to adjust the sound you hit the speaker and you can move it to the right or to the left and then it will start beeping. Now it starts a slow beep at this top and as it gets closer to the apical constriction it'll beep a little bit faster to a point where when it gets right at the apical constriction it'll have a solid beep and then once it gets through you see a red dot come up and with that red dot that means that you're outside the canal. So anytime you're reaching that red portion, you need to be back inside the canal and pull back from that point. But the adjustment is done by pressing the speaker and moving that dial either to the right or to the left. In looking at the screen of the Promark Apex locator, up in the left hand corner you have a picture of a full tooth. That picture just shows you as the file is advancing towards the apex. The graphic on the right is a blown up area of that apex. As we stated, you want to get to the third green bar. But the reality is you have a position between the first green bar and the third yellow bar where that apex can be positioned. If you go by the manual, you're going to go to the third green bar. But sometimes what, what you can do is you can actually alter that where you want your apex to be. Now, in my, when I do this, I actually go to the third yellow bar. Now, there's a couple reasons why I can do that. Number one, when you're using an apex locator, you always want to get patent. Well, if I'm getting patent, I'm going through the end of that root, and I know that that root is not going to be clogged up or that apex is not going to be clogged up. So I can file to that point because my small files are going to that point. The larger files, I will actually reduce the length for about a half a millimeter. So if I get my length at 20 millimeters according to that third yellow bar, me personally, 
I end up filing back to 19 and a half millimeters, which probably is about where that third green bar is. But I do that for a couple reasons. One is I'm getting patent, and two, consciously I'm knowing I'm clearing the end of that root and, and cleaning out to the apex and to the, the minim, minor diameter. Here's another important point to remember. How do you know within that gradient where you want to be at? Well, I wish I could tell you something that's going to enlighten you that'll, that'll say, I just need to go to this point and that's it. But the truth of the matter is, it takes a little practice. It takes a little effort in the sense that you're going to treat one canal to a certain point, you fill that canal. Well, if you're long every time you're filling with your, your filling material, maybe you need to shorten back a little bit. Maybe instead of going to that third yellow line, you need to go to the third green line. But if you're filling a case, you're filing it out, you're filling a case, and you're finding that your filling material is short of where you want to be, then maybe you need to extend that a little bit. So you have to learn your apex locator. You have to determine what that apex locator is telling you so you know within that gradient where you want to be. Again, I go to the third yellow line, I make my adjustments according to, as we talked about before, where my paper point reads the end of the root. And I can adjust from that point. But as a general rule, I'll usually pull back about a half millimeter from that yellow line. You can do it the opposite way. You can file directly to the green point, to the third green line, and say, that's where I'm going to be. But just make sure when you fill your cases, that your cases are filled to the apex and filled properly. If you're short or long, then you, that's where you have to adjust of what you're reading from the, with this apex locator. Let's take a minute to talk about a few tips on how to use an apex locator. Now granted, we're looking at the Promark apex locator, but remember, these tips are for any apex locator that you're going to use. First and foremost, what you do is you turn your unit on. Now, that may sound stupid, but the point is, is you don't want to hook up the apex locator to the file and to the, to the lip of a patient without it on. So you turn the apex locator on, then you hook up that lip clip to the, to the uh, patient, and then you put the, the file clip onto the file. If you do it before, the, it may not read it properly. That, the apex locator, in a sense, has to readjust between each canal and each case. And the way to do that is turn it on first, hook up the lip clip second, and then hook up the file clip third. As you're using the apex locator, you want the chamber to be dry. You don't want wet fluids inside that chamber because if you do, you're not going to get a consistent reading. You don't want any shared fluid between the canals. You don't want any saliva leaking in there. What you need is you need to have a dry chamber. Now I'm going to throw a little bit of something at you. When I say that the, the chamber must be dry, it should be dry of fluids. You can have lubricants in there. You can use a lubricant such as ProLube or Glide File Prep. Those are great because that helps the conduction of the, ape, of the uh, file with the apex locator. So you can have your chamber with lubricant in it, but don't have it wet. If you put your apex, it put your file in a canal and you find that you're still not getting the proper reading, then basically all you need to do is take a paper point, put it into the canal, and just dry the top portion of that canal. Then reinsert your file and usually you'll get a pretty consistent reading. So remember, canals can be wet, but the chamber must be dry of fluids. Let's take a moment to talk about access seals. Sometimes we'll have a case where the tooth is broken down, a lot of decay in the tooth. Well, you've got to get that decay out, and you have to build up the walls of that tooth. You can do that by either composite, temporary filling material of some kind, but essentially what you want to do are two things. One is you want to create a seal so there's no leakage of fluids inside, and the second thing is you want to create a reservoir with inside that tooth where you can put your irrigants, where you can put your lubricants, and they can stay inside without communicating externally. If they do communicate externally, what you're going to have is you're going to have fluid which is communicating from inside the tooth to outside the tooth, and you're not going to get a proper reading. A couple things that you can do to help the saliva from contaminating the inside of a tooth. Now, every, sometimes we'll put a rubber dam on the tooth, the clamp will be there, but there's a little hole or a little communication 
underneath that rubber dam where that clamp and that rubber dam isn't closing it off. Well, what you can do is you can take some sort of sealant. You can take a gel and put it around the tooth, a self-hardening gel that will keep the, the saliva from going underneath that rubber dam. You can use caulking material to put around there. You can use cavet, anything you can do to seal up around the outside of the tooth. You can use some composites if you'd like and just light cure it. You don't have to etch it obviously, but you're gonna just put the composite around and, et and light cure it. And then what it'll do is it'll harden up and it'll keep the fluid from going inside that tooth. And it's a good way to keep all this saliva and all these external fluids from contaminating the inside of the tooth. One of the things that you want to make sure is that you don't have metal contacting metal as you're getting an apex locator reading. Now in my practice I go through a lot of crowns and as I'm going through crowns I have to keep that file away from the from the side of that metal that's underneath that crown. Well there's a couple ways that you can do that. One of the easiest ways is is to get a little plastic sleeve and put it around the file. When you're doing that, what's happening is, is that plastic will hit against the side of the wall instead of the file hitting against the side of the wall. But the other thing that you have to think about is you want that file to be free within that access opening. So if you just open up your access just maybe a little bit more, then you can keep that file away. Sometimes it just takes two hands to use the apex locator instead of just one hand. Put the file on, move it around, as you're, as you're moving the file up and down, the other hand finger can stabilize that file as it's going into the, into the canal. One of the ways of getting that plastic sleeve is the ProLube uh, ampules that, that are there. What you can do is you can cut off the tip, the nozzles of those, and you just section it in a couple places. And once you section it, essentially what you have is you have a hollow tube. Now you can take that hollow tube and put that around the file and then when you do that, that will act as your insulator in a sense against the metal on the side walls. Another thing that I've heard of that you can do is you can get a little piece of cotton, roll it into a ball, stick the file through the cotton, and then when that cotton's in the chamber, it's gonna, that's going to be your buffer from that amalgam metal or the, the metal from that crown against that file. Another little way that you can do that is actually use two rubber stops. I know this sounds crazy, but if the access is large enough, you can actually put one rubber stop a little bit lower on the file, stick that into the canal, into the chamber. The rubber, first rubber stop is going to bounce against the side wall, so you're not going to have the metal contacting, but you use your second rubber stop as your reference point to, to uh, determine where your length is. We went over this previously, but I, it's, I think it's very important for me to say this you need a reproducible reference point. Again, you need a cusp tip, you need a flat area of a tooth where you can put your rubber stop to, gain, to determine what your working length is in a reproducible manner. So it's very, very important that you have a, a place that you can go back to consistently to, get the, to, the, to determine the length. When the, in the process of using your apex locator, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a file and you're gonna put it in a canal. Me personally, I like to put a lubricant in that chamber before my file is placed into the canal. When you're using the lubricants, the lubricants help the conduction of the readings from the apex to that, uh, from the file to the apex locator. So I put my lubricants in the canal and then what I'll do is I'll advance my file down through the canal. As you're advancing it down, you're making little back and forth movements, watch winding movements to get it down into the canal. Once you're near the apex, then what you can do is you can just rotate it either clockwise or counterclockwise in order to get it to the exact position you want it according to again those bars that we talked about before on the Promark. Now if it's a little bit long, all you have to do is take the filed handle and just turn it very minimally counterclockwise and what will happen is is the, the uh, file will back up and as it backs up you'll get a proper apex locator reading according to the Promark. So again in looking at this video essentially what we're going to do is we're going to place the lubricant. Once we place the lubricant then we're going to take a small file. Now this is a number 10 file that you put down 
and then you're going to hook up the file clip to it. Now I like to have the file out of the canal a little bit further before I hook up the lip file clip, but you can do it in that spot. But as you notice in this video, you're turning the file very, very gently, either clockwise or counterclockwise until you get to the position that you want to be at. Once you get to that position according to that diagram, again, on the face of the, of the uh, Promark Apex locator, then you take it out and that's where you measure to. And you say, hey, that's the length that we're going to go with. Again, to reiterate, if it, the file is too long, what you can do is you can take it and you can turn it counterclockwise just a bit. It doesn't take much in order to get a proper reading. Now, one of the things I'd like to tell you is when I do this, I get multiple readings with my apex locator from each canal. What I mean by that is, is that I'll get a reading with maybe an 8 file, a 10 file, a 15 file, and or a 20 file, depending on the size of the canal. But if you can get a reproducible length with multiple files, then you know that you're going to be pretty accurate. In other words, sometimes you can put a number 10 file and you're going to get one reading, and then a number 15 file you may get a different reading. But if those two readings are the same, then you know you're going to be pretty accurate. But if those two are off, you better take a step back, maybe wash out some fluids and read, re, uh, maybe wash out some fluids and redetermine where your length is going to be and try and get something that's more consistent as you're working with those files. So use a number of files. You don't have to just get the reading with one file. Try it a, a couple times with different files, especially if you're just learning this, because it'll give you a perspective of, of, of confidence, in a sense, that you're reproducing where you want to be at. The file clip that we used needs to be inserted into the lead from the apex locator. The tip of that file clip is made of brass. After numerous usings and after numerous sterilizations, sometimes you can get a little bit of oxidation or a little bit of corrosion on that brass tip. Just go get a little piece of, of, of steel wool and clean it off. Just wipe it off and make sure that it's clean before you put it in there because you want all your connections to be proper in order to make this apex locator work the way you want it to do. A little trick that you can try, or a little trick that you can do, is that with the file clip, once you're done using it, when you put it off, take it off your hand, you got to put it somewhere. Well, in, instead of putting it on a patient's chest or letting it dangle uh, next to the patient, just get that file clip and clip it onto the excess rubber dam material that's there. It keeps it nice and clean and it keeps it nice and handy so when you want to go back and use it again. Although I've stated that you want to have lubricants inside the, t inside the tooth and no fluids, with the lip clips it's a little bit different. You need fluid on the lip clip and that can be just saliva, but you need that fluid on the clip in order to get the connection from the lip into the lead. Now a person who maybe has no saliva you may want to put a little bit of lubricant on that clip in order to get the communication uh, between the clip and the lip. Um, but if there's no meter reading, try and look at it from the standpoint as I just, I have to put a little bit of lubricant on that clip. There are occasions when you're using your apex locator is that you'll get a reading where it bounces around. In other words, you're looking at the graphics of, that, of the uh, Promark and what you're going to find is that as the graphics go down, they're bouncing. Instead of moving in a fluid motion down and back up, it's just bouncing around. When you have that situation, you have to look at, at, at the inside of the tooth in a couple ways. First of all, check to make sure that you're not connecting any metal at all. Make sure that that file's away from the canal. The second thing is, is the chamber must be dry, as we talked about. No shared fluids between the canals. But sometimes the other thing is that your instrument may be too small. In other words, you're using a 10 file when in essence you should be using a number 20 file. Sometimes these canals are larger. Sometimes you need to go up to a 30 to get your proper uh, initial reading from that. But you need to have a little bit of intimate contact between the file tip and the canal wall. And once you do that, you're going to get more of a consistent reading. So if your file is too small, just increase the size of the file as you're working and usually you'll get that to stop bouncing around. 
Sometimes you'll have situations where you put the file inside of a canal and you're going to find a perforation. Now when you get it to a perforation and you initially put that file into that perforated site, you're going to get that apex locator to bounce real quick. Well, when it bounces real quick like that, that's when you got to take a step back and relook at it. So it'll tell you where that perforation is. The other thing is if you have an incomplete apex, again, you could have a situation where the apical area is resorbed or you can have a young tooth that is not fully formed. In those cases, it's very difficult to get a reading with the apex locator. And again, sometimes you just have to go to a larger size file before you're going to get a proper reading from that apex locator of where the end of that canal is. Again, in looking at this graphic, it's showing you that there's intimate contact with the apex of the, with that file. If the file is too small, you're not going to get a proper reading. And sometimes you've got to just get a, a file that's a larger size, take it all the way down to the apex in order to get the proper reading. The other thing, and something we haven't talked about, is you need to be patent. Patency means taking a small file and going through the end of the root. The reason why you want to do that is to clear the end of the root. If the end of that root or the end of that canal is blocked, you're going to have debris there. And what you're going to end up doing is you're going to read where the debris is and not where the end of the canal is. And so you need to get patent. You need to take a number 10 file and you need to push it through the apex for about a millimeter and then take it back. Now getting patency doesn't mean that you file through the end of that root. What it means is, is taking a small file right to the apical diameter and pushing it through a millimeter and pulling it back. And the interesting thing is when you look at your apex locator, what you'll actually see on the graphic is you'll see the bars move down and in a consistent, constant progression it'll move back up. And when it moves consistently down and back up, then you know that you're going to get a good reading. It's when it's bouncing, that's not good. But in order to avoid that, you need to get patent. You have to get patent with an apex locator. If things aren't working, start over. When all else fails and you feel like it's not going right, start over. I can't tell you how many times I've got an apex locator to bounce around. You just didn't feel like it's working right. You just didn't, you felt like something's not proper. Well, take a step back, take a deep breath, and start over. And starting over literally means taking the lip clip off, taking the file clip off, turning the unit off, turning the unit back on, and then going through all the steps that you did before. And doing it that way, usually there's something that you missed or something that's remiss that will correct itself and usually you'll find that it'll work at that point. A couple things to think about when you're using apex locators is in my opinion, I would advise you to take an x-ray any time that you're using an apex locator. Now I know there are people that won't and they'll trust their apex locators and say it's good. But a couple reasons why I like to take x-rays. One, first and foremost, for legal reasons, you have documentation of exactly what you're doing. The second thing is, is that you have a, a picture that you can look at and say, hey, I'm right where I want to be. And again, it's that little extra confidence that you get that helps make this successful. So take a picture of a working length file just to compare it to your apex locator. And again, just to make sure you're where you want to be at. The Promark that, we, that we're using has a nickel metal hydride battery. Now, when you first take it out of the box, you have to charge it six hours before you can use it. It's battery operated, so you don't have to keep it plugged in, which is nice. But if the batteries run down, you need to recharge it anywhere from four to six hours. Usually the batteries last about five hours on this. But when it does run down, just plug it in, keep it there for four to six hours, and it'll just recharge itself. The disadvantage, if it runs out of charge, you can't use it while it's charging because the lead to where it charges is the same lead to where the uh, uh, file clip goes into. As with all electronic devices, the bars shown on this apex locator do not represent millimeters. So some people will look at that and say, okay, I'm one bar away, that means I'm one millimeter away. You can't do that. You have to throw that out. The bars have no reference whatsoever to millimeters at all. 
you have to take it for where the bars are to determine, say, this is where I want to be at this particular bar, not that three bars back means you're a millimeter back. It has nothing to do with that. So get it out of your mind that those bars are, are any form of distance in that apex locator. It's not. It's an empirical position within that canal. The nice thing about the Promark's apex locator, it can be programmed to your individual needs in different settings. You have to go into what's called a doctor's choice setting to do that. One of the things that I can tell you is the, the apex locator beeps. It's kind of interesting, kind of funny, because when I was using the apex locator initially, it would always beep. And you'll have a patient laying in the chair and they're looking like this and they're always moving their head back and forth trying to see where that, what's beeping. Well, actually what I've done is I've turned the beeping off and I just look at the screen. Some people like the beeping and that's okay, but you can adjust this apex locator to where you want it to, to read, where you, how much you want it to beep, how loud you want it to beep, and so it is adjustable. And so take advantage of that to adjust it to your particular needs. And finally, the thing that I would tell you is prior to using this apex locator, read the manual. You'd be amazed at what you can learn by reading, reading a manual. Whether it's this apex locator, whether it's any other device you have in your office, I highly recommend read the manuals because we become smarter when we read those instead of just trying to be a macho guy to say, oh, I know how it works and I don't have to worry about that. Read the manual, it'll only make you a little bit better. Let's take a moment to recap some of the things that we've learned today in obtaining proper length control. The first thing is straight line access. We want to be able to see into that access and have those files go to the apex without any impediments in the way. The second thing that we need is we need a re reproducible reference point. Once we have that reproducible reference point, the files will have a consistent measurement throughout our procedure. And the third thing, and probably the most important thing that I feel, is that we need to trust our apex locator. Once we trust what it's telling us, we can have a consistent, reproducible measurement time after time. I can tell you, when I was a general dentist, and even as an endodontist in the early years, we didn't have apex locators. And so my fills were all over the place. It was frustrating because you couldn't find exactly where you wanted to be in a consistent manner. But it wasn't until I got that apex locator and started using an apex locator that I was able to gain a consistent, reproducible length to my fills. Your confidence goes up and you feel good about yourself. So I hope this was helpful for you today. I want to thank you for listening and I wish you much luck in the endeavors of your root canals.